Welcome back. I'm Anthony Ray and this is our second video in our motion practice series, Post-Trial Motions. For anyone facing a possible criminal trial, these tutorials are not to be missed. So if you haven't watched the first video, you can click the link in the description box below or visit our criminal defense channel to have a look. In it, we cover some common pre-trial motions that can change the tide of your case. Today, I'm going to go over motions that you may want to use after trial. Before we get into the list, let's talk about motion hearings. During a motion hearing, both the defense and prosecution have an opportunity to orally present their arguments on how the judge should rule. Generally speaking, most motions are filed by the defense. So usually the defense attorney will argue on why the judge should approve the motion while the prosecution will argue on why the judge should deny it. Not all motions require a hearing. Some only require submission of a written request to the court. Those that do require a hearing provide additional opportunity for you as a defendant to come face to face with the judge. Now, on to post-trial motions. There aren't as many post-trial motions as there are pre-trial but they can be equally as vital to the eventual outcome of your case. Here are a few of the typically used post-trial motions. First up, a motion for a new trial. This motion is used when the defense counsel believes that there are grounds to warrant the judge granting another opportunity to prove their client's innocence. Defense counsel must be able to show that justice demands this. It may be based on some type of legal error, like violation of procedural rule or violation of a constitutional right. Next up is a motion for a directed verdict. What kind of motion is this? This is useful for when a defendant believes that based on the evidence against them, they should not have been convicted. It should be submitted after the prosecution has presented its case. This is a very challenging argument to make, as it essentially seeks to invalidate the trial proceedings in terms of evidence submitted by the prosecution. It is a request that the judge direct the jury to issue a verdict of acquittal because the evidence was woefully insufficient. The last motion we'll cover today is a motion to correct an invalid sentence. This motion should be used when the defendant believes that there has been an error or defect in the sentence or sentencing procedure that entitles them to be resentenced. Types of errors may include an improper application of the sentencing guidelines, a sentence that violates a constitutional right, or when a defendant is incorrectly sentenced to consecutive or back-to-back -back prison terms instead of concurrent terms, which are served at the same time. When you're facing a criminal matter, having an attorney who understands how to navigate the rigors of trial is essential to your defense. If you have a legal issue you want us to explain, go ahead and leave it down below, send an email, or give us a call. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.